Welcome back to Data Driven Recruiting. My name is Sophia Beck, and I'm joined by my co host, Tigran Slayan. As always, right? <laughs> and the scene doesn't change. Cool. So today we're talking about the top five applications of AI in recruiting. And this is right on the money because just this week, like two days ago on Monday, we released an episode on the Go Beyond Resume series where we talk about how AI is going to change the face of recruiting and how it can do it in a good way or a bad way. So if the listeners haven't yet seen it, you should definitely check it out. But I figured, you know, why not talk about what other applications are there and rank them from, you know, the top number five into top yeah. one. Cool. Yeah, and then artificial intelligence has so many applications in so many industry. Mm -hmm. I guess we, we can learn about what can be done and also like what are the things that we can start you know, using today. So exactly. this is really exciting. Exactly. So number five. Number five are the chatbots. I think that's been kind of the one of the most successful applications of AI in recruiting today. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially how they work is kind of they automate some of the processes. Uh, and I've seen the good and the bad version, right? So like sometimes companies overdo it where like the chatbot kind of tries to replace the entire human component where it's like, uh, starts asking really awkward questions, starts yeah. annoying the candidate. Yeah, or it doesn't yeah. understand when I share answer. Exactly, it's right? Possible. doesn't understand. Yeah. It's like, you know, I'm sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> what, can you repeat that? Uh, but the good version is just kind of like, let's say I'm a candidate, I'm trying to apply for a job. Mm -hmm. And instead of waiting for a few days to hear back from somebody who asks me like, oh, could you provide this and this or something like that? It's like very standard things. Yeah. Like a chatbot can very quickly have that conversation, request any additional necessary or missing information, clarify mm -hmm. a few things, and just accelerate the, the process while making it a good experience for the candidate, mm -hmm. and also saving quite a bit of time on the on the recruiting end. Right, so use it with caution. Use Test it, it caution. you know, <laughs> think about the applicant's point of view, and yeah. then you can launch it. Exactly, okay. try it out as an applicant yourself, right? right. And some of the, <clears throat> I guess, good examples, one of the most popular ones is Maya, there is mm -hmm. another one called Olivia, uh, everybody keeps naming it. I guess it's the whole uh, virtual assistant idea on yeah. Siri and Alexa. <laughs> so, uh, cool. So number four is uh, writing better job posts. Mm. Uh, so, you know, these days when you're trying to compose a job post, yeah. obviously you don't have job post writers, like professional job post writers. So that's kind of not a profession that exists. So everybody tends to wing it or copy it from somebody else's job post, yeah. which given now the industry as a whole doesn't do a really good job of writing job posts that are really appealing to candidates, it could right. be hard. Yeah. So there are several companies who are trying to do, like analyze a massive amount of information mm -hmm. and create better suggestions for how to write job posts that are appealing to candidates and that are appealing to specific types of candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the best examples and popular examples is the, the company called Textio, where it's something like a Chrome extension that as you're writing your job post, it makes suggestions on how do you make it more appealing to certain types of candidates. If you say like, hey, I want to attract more diverse candidates, they have a lot of data and training models that say, okay, this type of phrasing tends to get more diverse applicants. Mm -hmm. So. Pretty yeah, cool. It's a good good check. Yeah. Assisted writing. <laughs> exactly, yeah. right? Assistant right. writing. I guess one thing that ties into it is something like Grammarly, which tries to use AI to just improve your writing overall. Mm -hmm. But this is has a way more recruiting focus and like way yeah. more niche into how do you right. make it more appealing. Right. Yeah. Which is great because uh, if you can really deploy the data and analysis that went into how to make it more mm -hmm. exciting to candidates, yep. why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Harness uh, that power. <laughs> harness the power. So right. number three is assessment integrity. What I mean by assessment integrity is, you know, these days there is a lot of companies trying to create like automated assessment, you know, processes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Obviously, we're doing it at Code Signal for technical assessments. So right. if you're hiring for engineers, we provide a solution that does automated technical assessments. Mm -hmm. But there's other technical assessments, behavioral, there is some for sales, there's some for accountants. Mm -hmm. And ensuring that, you know, people who are taking those assessments are not cheating is is a key factor. And up to this point, the way assessment services have ensured that is through humans, right? right? So like if you're taking an SAT or if any international people are joining and have no idea 
mm-hmm. of what SAT is, if you're taking like TOEFL, right, like English, the English language yeah, assessment, like yeah. the way you do it is you show up at a test center, a human is like watching you do it, they right. check your ID, they proctoring monitor, in, exactly. In like physical space. Human proctoring. Yeah. Uh, these days, technology has reached a point where you can just use AI as well as the the camera and the microphone and the laptop to automate mm-hmm. all of it. So from automatically detecting any sort of uh, weird behavior, such mm-hmm. as you kind of like talking to somebody or somebody else's voice popping in there, right. to using image recognition technology, which is also AI and machine learning, to say uh, the person whose ID was shown, is this still the person who's completing the assessment? So making it more comfortable for candidates because I don't have to go to a test center, I don't have to wait in line for two months to have an available spot at a test center, which right. is actually happens, it's yeah, really annoying. Yeah. Uh, all the way down to saving the time and making the cost cheaper because for something like an SAT or TOEFL, you pay hundreds of dollars to mm-hmm. take that assessment and one of the biggest factors of the cost is uh, human Practical proctoring. Yes, yeah. yeah. you have to pay yeah. humans to actually sit there and watch you, like, improve. and also pay for rent pay to for host the <laughs> test center for the right. location. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's great application of AI. Yeah. yeah. And number four is actually or number two. Well, right. Yeah. So we're going reverse. So we right, went right. five, four, three, two. So yeah. top two is actually the one that we talked about uh, in the Monday's episode of the Gobian resumes, which mm-hmm. is. Uh, using AI to identify like why you might not be building an inclusive culture, right? So mm-hmm. like what happens when you hire people, uh, you know, who stays, who leaves, when do they leave, why do they leave? Is there any sort of common pattern in the data that a machine learning algorithm could identify? Yeah. Because as Malum, one of our guests to go beyond resume said that like, you know, diversity recruiting is not just about bringing a lot of diverse candidates into the team. It's about being able to keep them. Yeah, and then help them succeed. And help them succeed, right? Create an inclusive culture where people feel empowered to succeed. Mm -hmm. And to an naked eye, it's really hard to identify, like, why why are we not succeeding at doing this? Uh, There are some companies trying to do this. Most of them are trying to do it mostly on the, like, how do you better attract them? But Mm -hmm. a few of them are trying to go into the area of, like, how do you keep them as well? Yeah. And can you feed a lot of data into a machine learning algorithm? Unfortunately, mm-hmm. this only works at like larger companies. Right, because you need a lot of data. Uh, you need a lot of, of data. Your right? data of your own company data. Of your own company data to feed into the machine learning algorithm to train it. So unfortunately, it only works today for larger companies. But in the future, it can also give like best practices, such as right. what are the commonalities? What do people do differently yeah. that seems to work that a machine learning algorithm could identify? Yeah, great. Okay, so the the last the grand num- finale. Yeah, the number <laughs> one. Number one is uh, matching. So, like, ultimately, what is hiring and recruiting is finding the best match between mm-hmm. a candidate and a job slash a company. Mm-hmm. And this is a problem that's going to take a long time to solve, mainly because it has way too many variables, and the variables start from uh, having enough data to train a model on. Right. So, like. Having enough data on the candidate side and having mm-hmm. enough data on the job slash company side. Right. Like if you think about the matching problem, such as think about like, you know, calling an Uber or a Lyft, mm-hmm. uh, you know, those companies know everything about your location, where you want to go, how much money are you willing to pay, mm-hmm. and how comfortable you want to be. Do you want to go with somebody else? Or you want a fancy car, right? right? Those pieces of information give complete detail about you as one side of the match. Mm-hmm. And they know then they know everything about like what's the traffic like, mm-hmm. what kind of cars are available, right. where are they, where are they going, yeah. and how much does it cost to complete this right. Mm-hmm. So again, gives complete information on this side of it. Mm-hmm. So it's easy to take those two and kind of put it together as a match and create very, very, very high quality matches. And because the interaction is not a, a you know, very deep one, it's a it's more, more of a transactional. transactional. Yeah. So like you can actually have all the data that goes into it in one place because it's a very clear transaction that you're making. Right, right. and in hiring, it's far more complex, right? Mm-hmm. So like in hiring, you need uh, skill data, first of mm-hmm. all, which is still somewhat missing. This is kind of one of the areas that we're tackling to build enough skill data on the consumer side to say, 
here is what candidates can do when it comes to their skills. Mm -hmm. Next would be like personality, preferences, uh, salary expectations, all of the other pieces that go into Right. what defines a candidate looking for a job. Mm -hmm. uh, then the biggest missing piece, which I really, really hope somebody will build, if not we'll have to go build ourselves, is like on the job side and the company side, right? Like what does this job entail? What skills right. are necessary? What kind of personality traits and what mm -hmm. kind of culture? What kind of salary? A lot of companies are doing the salary piece right, from LinkedIn to Glassdoor to PESA, collecting a lot of salary data to have that piece. Mm -hmm. So I think the top application of AI in the next five to 10 years is gonna be like collecting all of this data into one model and being right. able to do recommendations, as high fidelity recommendations as like, hey, I want an Uber and I'm going to the XYZ location to say, yeah. here's the perfect five jobs for you. You should literally go talk to these people yeah. yeah seriously great well thank you so much for joining us today um, for more tips and insights on data driven recruiting please go to ddr.codesignal.com